Need an NPC? Here's a collection of some of the ones I've enjoyed making and playing over the years. Do you have a cheesy villain voice that you love, but don't want to use for an actual villain because it's a little too much? Use it on an NPC and make them super suspicious, but actually a good person. Hi. I've been watching you. What? Yes. I've seen the good things you've done, and I don't like it. Is he looking? I love it. The good you've been doing. It makes me sick. Oh, this guy needs a... With glee. I haven't seen such heroism in my life. It makes me want to smother you. Initiative? In puppy dogs and cotton candy, which I sell plenty of at my store. Please drop on by so I can kill you. With kindness. I hate this guy. This shopkeep tries to outdo the other one across town. Say they're both leather workers. And they each might have their own special logo or specific way they make their products that'd be easily discernible for a professional. So if you go to the one on the north side of the street, let's call them Mikey, then the other one, Adida, might feel annoyed when you walk by them, and vice versa. A charismatic consumer might be able to use this rivalry against them for cheaper prices. A curious customer might be able to find out the true reason for this rivalry, which may lie in an old misunderstanding of the romantic variety, perhaps a disagreement of manufacturing practices, or it could just be capitalism. The shady bartender. Generally above board, good at the usual bartending skills. Friendly, good listener. But whenever you ask for something, they got a guy. I need a better sword. Don't tell anyone, but I know someone. If you head to the docks at nightfall, there's a weird boat with a mermaid drawing. Go there, knock twice, and say, Marlin sent me. And if the players go to them enough, someday they might be sent someone who needs something. Hey, someone's at the door. Who's Marlin? Uh, <laughs> That's for me. I make a lot of suspicious people, so I like to balance it out by making genuinely good NPCs. Not over the top, just good. The good person is not going to actively seek out the PCs. Maybe he usually works at the farmer's market, making sure everyone's stalls and stands are in working order. But the party may run into him in any place. He's just helping fix things up. If they've been heroic, he'll compliment them. You're doing a great job. Again, not too much. He's not trying to get points or anything from the party. If a party member has been struggling with something, they may run into him, and he'll notice. He has experience and empathy, and he'll listen if they need it. If they don't want to talk, he won't press the issue. He'll just be there if they want him, and he'll give them space if they don't. If they look like they need a drink, he'll know a nice little lemonade stand around the corner. The key here is that he just wants to help, but that's it. This balances out the suspicious NPCs, so the party know that they're people that they can trust, that they can rely on to be good. And if you want to be particularly evil, if the party gets attached to them, you could target them as well. Not necessarily kill, but if the good person is shaken, doesn't show up to work, the lack of presence is felt. The impact is noticed. The first step to potentially spur the party into action. Everyone's a customer. So I'd love to have an NPC merchant who sells only a few things each time. Make sure the delivery is very distinct. The fire of the alchemist will singe every fiber of your being. The arrows of the lightning gods, jolting you into the afterlife to meet them for a moment if you're lucky forever if not. Because we're gonna see that whatever is not being chosen by the PC is gonna be used by an enemy very soon. This is gonna happen a couple times until the PCs realize it. Why are you selling to the bad guys? Their money is just as good as yours. At which point the PCs might start to think, if we buy one thing, we can prepare for the other thing. And they do, and it works. The enemy squad is decimated. Now they have incentive to go back to the NPC. And it works again. Did we break the game? Kind of. It's nice to reward the players for their ingenuity sometimes, but we're also going to be a little mean. We're gonna capitalize on one thing. The wagon is always just as shoddy. Their clothes always fairly old and dirty. Why don't you get something nice for yourself? You can probably afford it with all the business we give you. It's not my stuff. It's not my money. Then whose money is it? The party will encounter an old man, Harriman. I want to show the younger me what the world is like. The party can just share a fire and he'll pull out a memory strand to commemorate this. But if they want to help him, he'll lead them to a tower. He won't accept things like teleportation. If you want to help, you'll have to do so physically, catching him when he falls. If something like this happens, he'll pull a memory strand out. When you finally reach the top, you see the little towns along the way. A smile on this old man's face. One last memory strand poking out from his hand, ready to be tied into a knot in his journal. But he's gone. If they take the journal to put the last strand in. Harriman, this is what the land of Perunia is like. This is what it's like to maneuver around a troll camp. This is what it's like to receive a helping hand. When you're better, you'll be able to see these things for yourself. The next city they're going to is the home of this old man, his son and daughter-in-law, their children, specifically one very sick child named Harriman. This child will read and experience the things they won't be able to. We can do something, right? We got to! If they take the time to help this child, then maybe this old man's words will ring true. The younger Harriman will be able to see those things for himself.